Hi everyone, today's lesson is about AC in a pure capacitor. So what happens if there's a capacitor in a DC circuit as opposed to having a capacitor in an AC circuit? So this diagram is a capacitor in a DC circuit. Now if you have an uncharged capacitor in a DC circuit, what happens is when the circuit is complete, charges will flow to accumulate on the plates. And once the capacitor is fully charged, the current will stop flowing. And what you notice with the lamp over here in the circuit is initially the lamp is really bright because that's when you have the maximum current in the DC circuit. And once the current stops and the current gets weaker and weaker, the lamp is going to get dim and finally go off when the current stops. And the reason why the current stops is in a capacitor, charges never flow from one plate to the other. They just accumulate on the sides of the plate. Okay, so the capacitor actually acts like a brake in a DC circuit. As opposed to that, if you have a capacitor in an AC circuit, in an alternating current, the terminals are not fixed. What's a positive terminal at one end becomes negative at the, at the other instant because the charges are moving back and forth in an AC circuit. So when that happens, when the charges are moving back and forth in the AC circuit, you find the plates of the capacitor are getting alternatively charged and discharged and also the plate that was positive at one instant will become negative at the other instant and so on. So what do you notice about the lamp? That the lamp will not stop glowing but it'll keep flashing if the frequency is low and you don't really see the flash if the frequency is really high because the charges are moving back and forth really fast. So in an AC circuit the capacitor does not act like a brake in the circuit. Okay, now the next thing that we're going to look at is what is the effect or the relationship between voltage across the capacitor plates and the circuit current when you have just a capacitor in a DC circuit. So the next thing is the relationship between the voltage across the capacitor plate and the circuit current. And this is kind of like Ohm's law, the relationship between voltage and current, but this time instead of having a resistor, we have a capacitor in the circuit. And the way that the circuit is set up is you've got your AC supply, the symbol is like this. You have an emitter to measure the current. You have a capacitor in the circuit. And then in order to change the current, you can have a rheostat, okay? So that's your capacitor and you need a voltmeter across the capacitor to measure the voltage across the capacitor plates. So for different currents, that's when you're changing the sliding contact of the rheostat, you can get different voltages across the capacitor plates. And then if you plot them on a graph, Voltage across the capacitor plates against circuit current. Now current is measured in amps and voltage is measured in volts. You end up with a straight line graph which tells you that the voltage across the capacitor plates is proportional to the circuit current. They're directly proportional so when current increases, the voltage across the capacitor plates increases as well. And the constant of proportionality is called reactance. And because it's reactance of the capacitor, we put a little C as a subscript over there. Okay, so, so what is reactance? Reactance is the current limiting property of the capacitor. It does not convert electrical energy to heat. That's what the resistor does. But this is the presence of the capacitor in an AC circuit will have a current limiting effect on the circuit current. So that's what reactance is. Okay, and the next thing is we're going to look at what does this reactance depend on? So the next part is factors affecting the reactance of a capacitor.
There are two things that affect the reactance of a capacitor. One of them is the frequency and the other thing is the capacitance itself. So the reactance of a capacitor is affected by the frequency of the supply and also the capacitance of the capacitor. Okay, so how is this affected? The thing that we have to think of while we are reasoning this out is that if reactance is high, the current is going to be low. Okay, so with that in mind, so when, when the frequency increases, that means the charges are moving back and forth more often. That means the current is going to be high. So if the current is high, the reactance is going to be low. So at high frequency, you got a high current and a low reactance. So that means the reactance of the capacitor is inversely proportional to frequency. And that's how this is written. What about capacitance? If the capacitance is very large, that means the capacitor can store more charge. So if more charge can be stored, it means more charges can flow through the wires. So if more charges are flowing through the wires, you're going to get a very high current, so low reactance. So then again, the reactance of a capacitor is inversely proportional to capacitance as well. Now the constant of proportionality over here is xc is equal to 1 over the 1 over 2 pi is your constant of proportionality. You put them all together and you have this formula to calculate the reactance of a capacitor. Now on your formula sheet it's given a bit differently. You've got to put two things together in order to get this. So the way that you see it on your formula sheet is xc is 1 over omega c where omega is equal to 2 pi f. So if you put both these together, you end up with that formula for reactants. So that's all for this lesson. Bye for now and I hope that helped.